So during the last video I did on uh, the uh, cardboard slide rule, I remember I had this slide rule, and I, have, I don't think I've really featured it. Um, this is from the Cleveland Institute of Electronics, and uh, they are still in business. It is a home correspondence course, I believe. Um, their website says they were around in 1934 and have been going ever since and offer uh, education in the area of electronics. So I'm curious if any of my viewers have uh, attended the Cleveland Institute of Electronics, the CIE. Um, and this is a slide rule made by Pickett. And so I'm not sure if this is something you got when you signed up or it's something you you, you had to purchase from them. I'm not quite sure about that. So if anybody has one of these, let me know. Uh, but this is a uh, this is a slide rule. Let me zoom out a bit here so we can see the whole thing. And of course, it's got the belt loop. Of course, you wore your slide rule on your belt. And so this went on the belt and then there's a little, uh, you know, clip here, you could take it off. Um, and uh, you could wear it like a holster and whoop, out comes your slide roll. And uh, I, I have to say, I never wore my slide roll on my belt. I put it in my briefcase. So I used to carry around a briefcase before backpacks. <laughs> used to carry around a briefcase with all of my uh, schoolwork in it and stuff. And um, I carried around two slide rolls. I carried around a big one and a little uh, six inch picket um, metal one. I had a, I had a bamboo one. Uh, that was long like this one, so you could get good numbers out of it. And then I had a little six inch one to do quick things with, and it was aluminum like this one. Um, so uh, it looks like a normal slide rule, right? Uh, so why did they, uh, why did they have this thing built? What's so, what's so special about it? Um, so let's, uh, let's zoom in a bit. Um, I don't know if this lens will get down there or not. We'll try. Alright, I think you can see that. Um, so we have the normal C and D scales. Uh, we have the normal log scale and uh, uh, both log 10 and natural logarithms. Um, and let's see here. We have the T scale, which is the tangent scale, the S scale, which is the sine scale, the A and the B scales, which are offset by um, let's see. Oh, no, that's not what I'm remembering now. These are just uh, powers of 10, I think, different or something. Um, anyway, A and the B scales. And, uh, oh, I remember. These are the uh, square scales. That's right. So 2 squared is 4. Um, 1.7 times 1.7 is 3. So that's, this is, these are the uh, square, uh, square scales. X squared, right? So C, C and D squared is A and B. And then uh, there's a couple of weird scales up here, and you can also notice there's a lot of weird writing here. L's and C's and X's and F's and stuff. So it's all uh, made to be special for electronics. And you can see the, uh, uh, you can actually see the number here. Uh, it's a Pickett uh, Electronic Model N515-T. And you can find the, uh, the manual for this online. So I'll put a link down uh, down below. Um, there's a four volume booklet set that came from the Institute of Electronics with class material on learning how to use a slide rule. And it's four volumes. And we'll show a little bit of that. Um, but it goes through normal slide rule functions and then these extended slide rule functions for electrical engineers, okay? So let's look over here. I think this is interesting. It tells you what the scales are uh, for non-electrical engineers. It, it says, okay, this is the regular scales. The, these are the sine x, tangent x. These are x squared. I should have looked over here. These are x squared uh, scales. This scale is x divided by 2 pi. So that's a special scale. So you won't find that on normal slide rules. So uh, x divided by 2 pi, that's something that electrical engineers do a lot of. And then this one is really nice. It's 1 over 2 pi x squared, right? So 2 pi squared and x squared all on the, uh, in the denominator. So this is a really great, really great function to have on the slide rule. And then uh, log 10 and log e. 
Okay, so we can use it like a normal slide rule, you know, uh, two times two, uh, put the two here and go over to two here, and two times two is four. So it does normal slide rule stuff. Um, actually, the log base 10 is handy for electrical engineers, okay? So if we have a, um, let's see, what's a good demonstration here? Um, let's say we have a, a 3 dB um, attenuator that's a factor of two in power, right? and a 6 dB attenuator is a factor of 4 in power. So what if you had 0.4? What if you had a 4 dB loss? Instead of a 3 dB loss, you had a 4 dB loss. Well, that's 2.5, right? So right, you don't even have to move the scale back and forth. Just, uh, you can read it directly off of here. So that, that's a handy, handy one for electrical engine to have. Um, so the real magic of this slide rule, though, is the back. The back is super, super cool. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so there's a special slide rule over here for things. Um, and then the rest of it is all equations. Here's all the equations that electrical engineers need to know, right? They're all in the back slide rule. So if you had this, like going to MIT or something and you had this slide rule, you'd probably get kicked out of class saying, hey, you're cheating. Because uh, it's got all the formulas. All, it's the cheat sheet right on the, right on the back of it. And it's got uh, Cleveland Institute of Electronics down here, Cleveland, Ohio. Patent number, even patented, made in the USA. And there's their insignia with a little... Uh, little atom with the electrons zipping around in it. Um, very cool though. Uh, Ohm's law, uh, impedances stuff, resonances, reactances. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at, um, look at this over here, because this is something you've never, ever, ever seen before, okay? Uh, it says reactance and resonant decimal point locator. Well, that's pretty weird. And it says reactance problems and resonance problems, okay? So we're going to solve a resonance problem, all right? So let's take a look at the uh, the four-volume set of uh, instructions this thing comes with. All right, uh, this is part three. So like I said, there's four parts, one, two, one, two, three, and four. This is part four, might be hard to read. Um, it says electronics and your slide rule. An auto-programmed lesson. So I guess auto-programmed means it's your own pace or something. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Electronics. All right. So let's go. I, I didn't print out the whole thing. We're only going to go through one lesson here. But I thought uh, page two was really, really cool. So let's show that. Electronics in your slide rule. Combined operations with electronic applications. Uh, Mr. Geiger, senior project director. Um, and here's... You know, here's the guy, he's in his pressed white shirt. Of course, he's an engineer. And he's got his, uh, he's got his plastic black glasses on. Of course, he's an engineer. And he's got a slide rule. So if there's any doubt, he has a slide rule. Look at this cool test equipment he's got. He's got a uh, RF generator, or maybe it's an audio generator. Looks maybe even audio. He's got a, uh, probably a five megahertz oscilloscope, state of the art. Um, he's showing a Lissajou figure on it. That's kind of cool. And then he's got some meter over here, measuring maybe volts and current or something. And maybe a little breadboard on here. So he's, he's testing something. Um, so yeah, this is, this is super cool. Okay, so let's go to one of the random pages here because I, I thought it was fun. Okay, so this one is how to use this funny scale on the back of the slide rule. We're gonna do a resonance calculation. So it says, find the resonance frequency of 40 millihenries and 0 0.03 microfarads. So if you had that in, in, a, in a circuit and it resonated, what frequency does it resonate at? All right, so we're gonna use these scales. Now, I know this is kind of a blurry printout here, um, but uh, we're gonna set, uh, on one of the scales, we're gonna set the 40, 40 millihenries, and on the other scale, we're gonna set 0 0.03, microfarads. And then on the bottom scale here, we're going to read the frequency. So it's automatically going to do that for us. Okay. So let's, let's see what we got. Okay. So, uh, let me zoom, let me zoom back down again. All right. So we're going to be using this scale here. And, uh, so these scales stay fixed. This one slides and this one right now says reactance problems. So we don't want to use this scale. We want to use resonant 
resonant problems, and that's way over here. So we have to slide our we have to slide our scale over to here. So now now these are all matched up. So we're in resonant frequency mode, resonant uh, resonant problems mode. Okay. So what did our problem say? Our problem said 40 millihenries. So um, if you notice, this is micro milli and micro micro, which is picofarads to us, um, micro microfarads or millis or so we have 40 millis. Okay, so we're going to go here to L. All right, so we're going to go to L. We need 40. So we're going to look on this scale here and we're going to say 1, 10, 100. So it's going to be somewhere between here 10 and 100. It's going to be going to be 40. So we know it's going to be somewhere somewhere right around in here. We can read the scale here, and so this is 2, and this is 5, and so 40 is going to be kind of like, kind of like there, third of the way, third of the way to 5, right? So we're going to call that 40. So we've set it to, uh, we've set it to 40. Now the other number we have is 0 0.03 microfarads. So we have to go to these scales. So we have micro, microfarads, millihenries, and micro microfarads. So the only capacitors we have are microfarads or picofarads. So we have microfarads, we have 0 0.03. So let's see, here's zero, here's zero 01, and here's zero zero 001. So we have to go to zero 01, and then it's 0 0.03. So this is 0 0.02. 0 0.03 is right about there. Okay. So, okay. I hope that makes sense. We have uh, the capacitor and the inductor. It doesn't matter which one you use. You can put the capacitor on top and the inductor on the bottom, the inductor by the bottom, the capacitor on the top. It doesn't matter. As long as you have the ratio correct. Okay. So the ratio is right. Now we go back down to these bottom two scales. Okay. Now the way that you read the bottom two scales is that there's a mark here and there's a mark here. This mark says kilohertz. Kilo, actually, hertz wasn't invented yet. Hertz wasn't uh, allowed yet. Uh, I think in 1960 something they let the hertz go through. I forget. 1970, 19. Anyway, somewhere somewhere in the 60s or 70s, the hertz got adopted. Uh, before then, it was the cycles. So kilocycles. So this is kilocycles and this is cycles. So we can use uh, either one. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the cycle one. So we're going to put our cursor here on cycles per second, hertz. And we're going to come down to the very, very bottom scale that says F. That's frequency, okay? So this is 1,000, 3,000, uh, 5, let's see, oh, uh, there's the little numbers down there, I'm sorry. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 6,000, 10,000, okay? So we're going to have it right here, and we're somewhere between 3 and 6. We're closer to the 6, so we're going to call it 5,000, okay? So 5,000 cycles per second. So we claim that if you take a 40 millihenry and a 0 0.03 microfarad, they will resonate at uh, 5,000 hertz. If we go over here, uh, it, this says FKC, and we're up here, so this is 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 6 kilohertz. Again, we can see that we're at 5 kilohertz, so the number 5 kilohertz, so 5 kilohertz. So it's a very, very easy little, uh, easy little thing to do, okay? So let's say that 5 kilohertz wasn't good enough. We needed to do a better calculation than that, okay? So we're going to go over to this side, and we're going to do a good calculation, all right? So, we need to get out our uh, paper. We're going to do some math. Everybody likes math. Um, and we need an equation. So let's go to the back of the ruler and uh, slide rule. And we get the equation. So re resonance, re resonance, here we go, F. F equals 1 over 2 pi square root of LC. All right. So here's our equation, right? Zoom up, zoom out a bit. I'm too close. Okay, so if we uh, move the, I'm sorry, gonna, my pen's going to be in the way here for a little bit. Let me write it down. Uh, one over two pi f. 
Okay, so if I move the LC over here, I get square root of LC equals one over two pi F. I move the F over here, right? So what is LC equals one over two pi F squared? Okay, we're gonna square all of that, right? Does that look familiar? That's one of the scales on our uh, slide roll. We have a scale that is one over two pi x squared, so 2 pi x all squared, which is exactly what we have here, 2 pi f squared. Well, f is our x, right? And so we can use that scale to solve this problem, okay? But we need to know what L, L and C are, right? And we know that we have uh, 40 millihenries and we have 0.03 microfarads, right? And so uh, we can just look at this and know it's gonna be, uh, the number 12, right? Four times three is 12. And then you can worry about all the decimal points. Now, in um, slide rule days, the slide, the decimal points were always just something you kept in your head. We already know from our very quick calculation in the back, our number's gonna be around 5,000. So we don't even need to figure anything out. All we need to know is the number 12. We know that 12 equals this, okay? So equal to 12, all right? So let's use our slide rule. Okay, so we're going to come to our slide rule, and we're going to use the uh, 1 over 2 pi f, and we're going to come here on the slide rule, and it's going to go 2 and a half, 4, 10, 20, 60, 100. Okay, what did we have? We had 12, right? So we're going to put our cursor here, or our, what do you call these things, Gradical, whatever, our line, we're gonna put on, on 12, which is about right there. Okay, so we're gonna put that right on 12, right? And we know that whatever is on the C, okay, that one over two pi that squared is the number. And so we can come right here and we can read it off, okay? And so um, we're going to get uh, four, let's see here, number 12, right? Yeah, number 12. We're gonna get 458, 458, okay? So 458. So what do we know in decimal points? We know that's 4580 hertz, okay? So do you wanna do that on a calculator? See how close we got? All right, okay, so let's do that. Let me, let me back up a bit. So we have L and C, we, we, need to do, we need to do this, right? So L is 40 millihenries, and C is 0 0.0 microhenries. Multiply those together, take the square root, multiply that by pi, which is there. Multiply that by two, take one over that, we get four, five, nine, four. Okay? So with the slide rule, we got four, five, eighty, and with the calculator, we got four, five, nine, four. Okay? Pretty darn close, right? Certainly with intolerances of the L's and the C's, you're gonna get out of the junk bin. <laughs> anyway, I hope that's interesting. Um, I, I like the slide rule a lot. Uh, I think it's pretty, it's pretty rare. I don't think I've seen many of them. Uh, I remember seeing it on eBay. I, I, I started amassing a slide roll collection once, and um, I remember seeing this one. I said, oh, I need that one. That one's really special. Um, yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>